Alright, hi team. Uh, just do a, doing a video on the last exercise from our textbook. Yay! Um, we are looking at argam diagrams and a few uh, cases we can use to uh, show loci. Now you remember um, locus and loci from uh, IG, I, I imagine. And we're going to look at three particular cases and I'm just going to explain to you how they work and then we will do some examples from the textbook. Uh, so the first case uh, is when you know uh, when you have the modulus of uh, z, a complex number, take away z1, another complex number, when the modulus of that is r, you know that z will lie on a um, circle with radius r. Okay, now let me just give you an example here. Let's say we didn't know what z was. Uh, you can see I've, I've, I've written it up here as, in the blue as z equals 3 plus i. But let's say we didn't know this. Let's say we did know z1 was minus 1 plus 4i. So that's plotted as this red dot at minus 1, 4i. Um, just imagine the y-axis is the imaginary axis and the x-axis is the real axis, please. Okay, so I've plotted um, z1. Now, if we know that z minus z1 is, has a radius of r, let's say r in this case is 5, what we can do is we can plot a circle of radius 5 around the red dot, which I've done in purple here. And we must know, therefore, that z, the complex number z, lies somewhere on the circle. And um, in this particular case, I've given z is 3 plus, r, uh, 3 plus i, and you can see it does lie on the circle. Um, but we can also prove that. We can go, well, what is z minus z1? If z is 3 plus i, we go 3 subtract minus 1, which gives us 4, and then we go i subtract uh, 4i is minus 3i, and if we find the modulus of that, that's going to be 4 squared uh, plus minus 3 squared, and then the square root of that, which is 5, and that gives us a radius, radius of 5. So we're going to need to be able to work with this particular case. Let's move on to a second case. If we have um, a case where we know that uh, z minus z1, the modulus of those two complex numbers, uh, when you subtract them, being equal to z subtract another complex number, z2, the modul modulus of that, we know that uh, z must lie on a perpendicular bisector of those two complex numbers. Now, I've given z1 is in the red here, 1 plus 3i, and I've plotted it over here at 1 plus 3i, and then z2 is 5 minus i, and I've plotted that over here at 5 minus i. I've then drawn a dotted line between them, which is um, uh, the, uh, the uh, line that joins them. And then to do a perpendicular bisector, I have to find the midpoint, which is here at 3 comma 1. And then I draw a perpendicular line going up. Now, z must lie somewhere along this line. In this particular case, I've got uh, z equals 4 plus 2i, and you can see that um, it does lie along this particular line. And we can actually go ahead and uh, do some figures on this. What is z minus z1? Well, uh, z minus z1 is going to be 3. Uh, and then 2 minus 3 is minus i. Okay. And then we'll do uh, z minus z2. So that will be 4 minus... Uh, so that will be minus 1, and then 2 minus minus 1 plus 3i. And I hope you can see that the modulus of both of these is going to be the same. This will be square root uh, th 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1, uh, which is square root 10. And this one will be uh, square root one, minus 1 squared, which is 1, plus 3 squared is 9. So you can see that's true. Um, at any rate, this case... Uh, is a way of finding the loci for where z would be if you don't know z, but you do know uh, z1 and z2. Final case that we're going to work with is case 3. Let's say we know that the argument for z minus z1, two complex numbers, where z1 is known and z isn't, 
is theta, what we can do is uh, find z, which I've done in red here, we draw a horizontal line that is uh, parallel to the real axis, and then we measure theta, angle theta from that line up, and then we draw a line, and we know that z must lie somewhere on it. So that's our third case there, and, in, and indeed in this case, I've got 6 plus 6i um, is z, and it does lie uh, at 0.463 radians from z1. So those are our three cases, and I thought it might be useful for us to try a few examples from the textbook to get you going, to get your head into how this sort of thing works. So, let's start with a fresh piece of paper here, um, and we'll stick in one of these. Okay, obviously I'm not going to be able to do it very accurately on here because I don't have a protractor and um, compass and that sort of thing. But let's just start with uh, number uh, 1D. So number 1D, we have to draw... Uh, we have to draw the modulus of Z minus 2 minus 2I some i there, is less than or equal to 2. So I'm going to do that here. First step is to make sure you've got it in the right form. So you're going to have a minus here and then a bracket like this. Sometimes it won't come like this. You've got to set it up into that form. So make sure you do that. Okay, we're going to plot this here first of all. Um, that's 2 minus 2i. So let's plot that. Okay, um, I want this. Okay, 2 plus 2, uh, 2 minus 2i. So 2 minus 2i, 2 minus 2i should be about here. So I'll plot that there. That's my point. Now, the radius has to be less than or equal to 2. So at this point, I'm just going to go around and draw a circle with radius 2. Um, I'm not quite sure um, how I'm going to do that very easily, but at least I know the perpendicular, uh, sorry, the vertical and the horizontal distances too, so I can get those four in. If I had a compass, I could do this much more accurately. Okay, there's my dodgy circle with my... Oh my goodness. Okay, right, so there's my circle. And then we want it less than or equal to, so we're going to shade in all of this bit here. So there is our first one. Okay, we'll clear that space. And try another one. Okay. Can I get a different color this time? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm now going to try um, number two. Uh, and this time, so it'll be two, and I want to do uh, AI. So we want to have a, uh, a circle with a center of two plus two I. So we've got center. 2 plus 2i, two and we need a radius of 2. Okay. So, I could do modulus z minus 2 plus 2i two equals 2. Okay, I could write it like that. Sometimes you might find it written like this. Okay, um, and then when it's written in this fashion, you want to rearrange it to this fashion so you know where to plot your center, which is 2 plus 2i, not minus 2 minus 2i. So I'm going to plot 2, 2i, there is my center, and then I've got a radius of 2, so I know it goes up this far, I know it goes out this far, out this far, and out this far. Now if you've got a compass, it's going to make this a lot easier um, than it is for me with my current equipment here. 
So, maybe I'll go just for the speedy kind of approach. That wasn't too bad, okay? I've got an equal sign, so I just need that line. That is the, um, the loci there of points. Okay, well, I think we'll now move on to number three. Uh, let's have a look. So I'll clear that off. I'm going to go to number three, and I think we'll do A. Okay, I'll just clear this off. 3A. And what have we got for 3A? Uh, we need arg z minus 1 is equal to pi over 2. Okay, so first of all for this one, I want to find uh, uh, my point minus 1. Well, minus 1 is... Uh, oh, sorry, again, I want to put it into the correct format, arg, and then it's z minus, and then I put my complex number. Now I've got 1 plus 0i. So really be careful with this, okay? You can go wrong if you don't set it up into this form. So I'm going to put a plot here at, for my complex number, just a real number with uh, 0i. And then I need my angle to equal pi over 2. Well, pi over 2 is 90 degrees, and remember we're measuring uh, from this angle. So that's our, that's our 0 angle. So therefore, our pi over 2, that means z is going to be somewhere along this line here that I've just drawn going straight up. Um, so this is arg z minus 1 equals pi over 2, that line that I've just drawn. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, let's try another one. Let's see if I can get rid of this stuff. Um, I'll just... Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so next one we're going to do, and maybe, let's see what looks good there. Okay, D, that looks like it could be a bit tricky. So for D, what have we got for D? We need arg, and then we've got uh, z minus bracket 2 plus 3i, and then our funny seagull bracket, uh, equals 3 pi over 4. Now, is it in the right form? Yes, it is. Nice. So we can plot our point 2 comma 3i, so 2 on the real axis, 3 on the imaginary axis. So that's our point. And we know that this is our zero degree out here, and we're measuring theta anti-clockwise this way, right? Okay, and we need three pi over four. Well, 90 three pi over four is, what is three pi over four? Uh, 90, is it 120, I think? So, no, 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 135. 135, I think. So you're going off, yeah, 45 degrees off this angle, isn't it? Sort of thing. So I reckon it's out like that. Okay, so this line that I've just drawn with the dodgy big arrow here, that is arg. I label it z minus 2 plus 3i, 3, 3 pi over 4. Uh, equals 3 pi over 4. Now you could obviously, it'd be easier for you guys because you can have a, a protractor to do it. Right, that is that one. Okie dokie, let's move on. Uh, let's delete that. I'll turn on this. Okay, so what do we want to do now is we'll move to, I think we'll move to 4. Rub it out, rub it out. Okay, cool. And I'll maybe I'll move, give myself a bit more space over here. Okay. So we're going to move to 4. And for 4B... Um, we've got uh, z plus i equals z minus 7i. Uh, modulus of both of those is the same. Now, this is uh, obviously case 2. But my, my first step is I want to really write these in the correct form, don't I? Uh, so that's 0 minus i. Uh, and this next one would be modulus of 7 minus bracket 
0 plus 7i. Okay, now we can plot our points. First point is minus i, so that looks to me to be, I think, hmm, looks to me to be here, I think. Yep, and then the other one is, uh, um, is that right? I think so. 7i. Okay, so that would be up here. Now, it's nice and easy to start off with, isn't it? Because um, we know that, I'll just draw a thicker line here. This here is the uh, bit that joins them. The perpendicular bisector is going to be midway between them. And midway between them is 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So this line that I'm drawing now is the line that Z would be on. Oh dear, okay. So this, and then I would just write, uh, what is the question asking me to say? Show the locus of points, yeah. So that, that there, Z would lie on e uh, uh, imaginary uh, equals three. Imaginary number equals three. I am Z equals three, or Y equals three. Okay. That one was not too bad, actually. Let's try um, another one from here. Let's see if we can find one that's a little bit more tricky than that. Um, um, why don't we try um, D? That looks like it could be tricky. No, uh, no. let's do E. Let's, let's go right to E. So we've got 7, mi we want the modulus of 7 minus 5 minus 2i. We want the modulus of that, and it's going to be equal to the modulus of z minus 1 minus 2i. Again, set them up correctly. Z, the modulus of z minus must be 5 plus 2i. And then this one would be the modulus of 7 minus 1 plus 2i. Now we plot those points. 5 plus 2i. 5 plus 2i. I reckon that's there. And then the other one is 1 plus 2i. Uh, 1 plus 2i. Okay. So that looks like that to me. Okay. So you can join these two together. So here's our line. And our perpendicular bisector is going to be the line that goes straight down. Just imagine it's straight. And you've got a ruler and you can do it straight. Straight down there. Uh, so we could say um, x equals 3, or real real number is 3 in that case. Okay, I'm going to move on to the...